Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on momentum and collisions. The topic of this video is action, reaction, and momentum conservation. Here's what we wish to learn today. What is meant by the law of action, reaction, and how does the law of momentum conservation emerge from this law of action, reaction? And probably most importantly, what is meant by momentum conservation in collisions and explosions? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, we discussed Newton's third law which states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The law explains that forces are the result of a mutual and simultaneous interaction between two objects. It essentially defines what a force is. A force is a push or a pull that is exerted on an object whenever that object interacts with any other object in its surroundings. It should probably be called the interaction force pair law because the law explains that forces always come in pairs. To illustrate, consider a person standing on the floor. As the person stands on the floor, the person pushes down on the floor with a force, and the floor pushes up on the person. That's a force pair, a pair of forces, one on the person and one on the floor. They act in opposite directions. They occur simultaneously and mutually as a result of a touching interaction between the two objects. That's Newton's third law. When object 1 collides with object 2, there are forces acting on each object as the result of their contact with each other, and these forces are of equal magnitude and of opposite direction. In symbol form, we could put it this way, that the force of object 2 on object 1 is equal to the force of object 1 on object 2. The negative sign in front simply means and in the opposite direction. Or more simply, we could put it, the F1 equal the negative of the F2. As an example, consider the collision of a more massive red cart with a stationary blue cart. The force on the red cart equal the force on the blue cart. It doesn't matter that the blue cart was initially stationary or that the red cart has more mass. The forces are of equal magnitude. Or consider a more massive truck colliding with a less massive car on a roadway. These forces between the truck and the car are of equal magnitude. The mass doesn't matter here. It applies to explosions as well. If we put a spring-loaded plunger between two carts and release the plunger so that they press in opposite direction, the force on the red cart equal the force on the blue cart. Again, mass doesn't matter. In every interaction, the force between the two interacting objects are always of equal magnitude. Students often have difficulty with this Newton's third law idea, and usually it's because of confusion with Newton's second law. See, Newton's third law describes the interaction forces between objects in a collision as being of equal magnitude, but Newton's second law describes the result of those forces, the acceleration, as being inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So if we consider Newton's third and second law applied to this collision between the truck and the car, well, the forces are the same on the car as they are on the truck just opposite directions, but the acceleration of the car is considerably greater than the acceleration of the truck because of the car's smaller mass. Or we could consider the extreme case of an unfortunate bug colliding with the windshield of the bus. Newton's third law says that the force on the bug is equal to the force on the bus. But Newton's second law says that the acceleration of the bug will be humongous and the acceleration of the bus will be minuscule. This is, a, this is an issue of cause and effect. Newton's third law describes the cause of an acceleration, and it's a force of equal magnitude on both objects. But Newton's second law describes the result of the force. It's an acceleration that can be different depending upon the mass of the two interacting objects. The law of momentum conservation states this. For any collision occurring in an isolated system, the total amount or combined amount of momentum of the two objects is conserved. That is, it remains unchanged. Here in this example, ball 2 is originally at rest. It has zero momentum, but ball 1 is moving. As a result of the collision, ball 2 is set in motion. It has gained momentum. But ball 1 is moving slower. It has lost momentum. The law states that the total amount of momentum before the collision is the same as after the collision. It doesn't change. For this to be true, the momentum lost by ball 1 must be equal to the momentum gained by ball 2. We can put some sample numbers in here to illustrate. Ball 1 has 50 units of momentum, ball 2 0. Before the collision, the total amount of momentum is 50. If you check out the after collision picture, Ball 1 has 20 units and Ball 2 has 30 units of momentum. 
That's a total of 50. The total amount of momentum has not changed. It's the same before the collision as after the collision. But if we check out the changes of the individual objects in the system, ball one has changed its momentum by negative 30 from 50 to 20. And ball two has a change value of positive 30 from 0 to 30. The change of ball 1 is equal and opposite to the change of ball 2. That's momentum conservation. It's always appropriate to ask the question, how do we know that this is true? So let's go through a little logical proof of the idea of momentum conservation. In any collision between an object 1 and an object 2, we know from Newton's third law that the forces are equal and opposite. That is, F1 equal to the negative of F2. That's Newton's third law. And from logic, we know that the time at which these forces act have got to be the same because they result from contact. And object 1 can't contact object 2 for a different time than object 2 contacts object 1. It's a mutual contact interaction. And so logic tells us the time for which force 1 acts is equal to the time for which force 2 acts. The third statement we can say is from math logic because we have two equations here. We could put it in the form of this. A equal B and C equal D. And if that's the case, math logic would tell us that A times C is equal to B times D, leading to this statement that F1 times delta T1 equal negative F2 times delta T2. In other words, the impulse on object 1 is equal to the impulse on object 2 from the math logic. The fourth statement we can make comes from physics logic because impulse is equal to momentum change. So if the impulses are equal and opposite, the momentum changes of the two objects are equal and opposite. So on the left, you see the momentum change of object 1, m1 times delta v1. And on the right, you see the momentum change of object 2, m2 times delta v2. These are equal momentum changes, but in the opposite direction. That is, one gains and the other loses and that's physics logic. To understand momentum conservation, it's helpful to go through this analogy, a money conservation analogy. Eddie needs an A, so he goes to his teacher and he says, how much would it cost for an A? The teacher says, well, it depends on how much you have. Eddie looks in his wallet and he has $80. The teacher looks in his wallet and he has $20. The teacher says, I think we can work something out. It will cost you $50 for an A. So Eddie gets out his wallet and hands $50 over to the teacher, and Eddie gets his A. Now, when this interaction is over, Eddie has $30 in his wallet, and the teacher has $70 in his wallet. If we look at this from the, cons from the perspective of conservation, what we could say is that before the interaction, the combined amount of money between Eddie and the teacher is $100. And after the interaction, we could say that the combined amount of money between Eddie and the teacher is $100. In other words, the amount of dollars is conserved in this interaction. But if we look at the individual objects involved in the interaction, Eddie's money went from 80 down to 30. Eddie lost $50. And the teacher's money went from 20 up to 70. The teacher gained $50. The amount of money that Eddie lost is equal to the amount of money that the teacher gained. Just to be clear though, you can't create nor destroy grades. They can only be earned. Let's look at this collision example. A three kilogram cart is moving at five meters per second and a stationary brick is held just higher than the cart. When the cart gets underneath the brick, the brick is let go of and the two objects move together at the speed of three meters per second after that collision. Now if we analyze this using the table, we're going to list momentum values of the cart, the brick, and the system in this table. Momentum, P, is equal to m times v. So for the cart before the collision, its mass is 3 and its velocity is 5, and that's a momentum of 15. For the brick before the collision, its momentum is 0. It was stationary. The total momentum of cart plus brick before the collision is 15 units. Now we'll do the after the collision analysis. The, the cart has a mass of 3 and is now moving at 3 meters per second. So 3 times 3 is 9. That's the momentum of the cart. After the collision, the brick's momentum is 2 times 3. That's a momentum of 6. If you total these up, the combined momentum is 15 units after the collision, which is exactly the same as what we had before the collision. So the total momentum of the system did not change. Now if we look at the individual objects in the system, the cart and the brick, the change in momentum of the cart was negative 6. 
It went from 15 to 9. That's a change of negative 6. And the change in momentum of the brick is positive 6. It went from 0 to 6. The change in momentum of one object is equal to the change in momentum of the other object, just in the opposite direction. But the total momentum change in the total column here, in, in the change column, the total row, if you add up positive 6 and negative 6, the total change for the system is 0. Momentum is conserved by the system. Now let's analyze this example. A 2 kilogram red car is moving at 4 meters per second when it collides with a 1 kilogram blue car moving at 1 meters per second. The two carts are equipped with Velcro so that they stick together and move at the same speed of 3 meters per second after the collision. Here is a momentum table. There's columns for before the collision and after the collision and the change, and there's rows for the red cart, the blue cart, and the total. So for the red cart, we can calculate the momentum by going mass times velocity. Before the collision, that would be a mass of 2 and a velocity of 4, a momentum of 8. For the blue cart, we would go mass times velocity, 1 times 1, and that's a, a, a momentum of 1. The total momentum before the collision is 9 units. We just add up the individual momenta. Then for after the collision, what we would have for the red cart is 2 times 3. That's a momentum of 6. And for the blue cart, it would be 1 times 3. That would be a momentum of 3. The total momentum after the collision is 6 plus 3, that's 9 units of momentum. The momentum of the system, the total momentum combined of the two objects, is the same before the collision as after the collision. Now let's look at the change. For the red cart, the change is from 8 to 6. That's a change of negative 2. And for the blue cart, the change is from 1 to 3. That's a change of positive 2. The change of the red cart is equal to the change of the blue cart. Only one gains, the other loses. But if you consider the system, you'd have to add them up. That would be negative 2 plus positive 2, and that's a change of 0. The total momentum of the system did not change. It was conserved, and that's what we call the law of momentum conservation. If this video has been helpful, maybe you could give us a like or subscribe to our channel or leave a question or comment in the comment section down below. To help you out, I have a series of next steps, an action plan for making the learning stick, and you'll find links to every one of these resources in the description section below. Check it out. There's a concept builder. There's a physics interactive simulation, and then there's a tutorial page. And additionally, special bonus, I have a couple of videos linked down there to some shorter examples that go along with this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.